Our Heavenly Father, we have come to Thee tonight in this usual way of singing hymns, reading the Word, and then speaking to Thee, knowing that the rest of the service now must be Your guiding help or it will be totally a failure. And we believe that Thou art here, and You know all things, and are working all things together for good to them that love You. Now here in my hand I hold some letters that's got handkerchiefs going to the sick and the afflicted. I were taught in the Bible that when Israel got cornered after leaving Egypt, the Red Sea was before them, and the deserts, and Pharaoh's army pursuing them, that one of the writers said God looked down through that pillar of fire and got angry with the sea because it had shut off the path that his children were walking into the Promised Land. And the sea got scared and rolled back and made a dry path for Israel to cross on. Now, you're still the same God. And now I'm holding these handkerchiefs, and maybe some poor old dad sitting out here around the Everglades somewhere, an old blind mother with a stick in her hand, beating around on the floor, trying to find her way around, or some little fever child laying somewhere, a mother waiting frantically for the handkerchief to return. Thou hast made a way of escape. And I pray that when these little tokens that we get from the Bible, that they're taking the handkerchiefs off of the body of St. Paul. We realize that we're not St. Paul, but we know you're still Jesus. And we pray, God, that when these little tokens are laid upon their sick bodies in commemoration of this prayer of faith that we're praying, that God will look down through them eyes again, and may the enemy that's bound them get scared and move back, and may they cross into the land of the promise of good health. Grant it, Lord. May there not be one of them, but what will be healed. And grant the same thing here tonight. May the Holy Spirit take over this meeting and get into the meeting, get into the people, wind his way into the hearts of the people, and may there be great things accomplished tonight because of his presence. For we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. of uh, praying for the sick, sending handkerchiefs. I get the greater part of my testimonies come from handkerchiefs. There have been so many things that the Lord has done because they can reach more people. We mail out perhaps maybe a thousand a day from Jeffersonville. And so we send them. Anytime you need one, you don't need it now, put it in your Bible and put it on Acts 19. And then I just wish that time would permit of how many things have happened. Sometimes you take it laid on Acts 19 in the Bible. If you don't have any use for it now, leave it there. When emergency arrives, or just take the handkerchief and lay it on the child. It's got the creep or whatever it is. Watch what takes place. It's just been marvelous what our Lord has did. The only thing it is is just a little point of contact. That's, now, when I send these out, There'll be a regular form later. At the same time, I ask everyone to pray at, at 9 o'clock at morning, 12 o'clock at day, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's the world around. And people get up at midnight and night in the old countries to meet that prayer chain at the same time. Literally tens of thousands and thousands of thousands of praying at the same time. God's bound to hear you. Just, you're just storming heaven with prayer, you see. So, He's got to hear. Just think how many faithful people in there, and they're praying one for the other. Everyone praying. They lay the on them and pray. I've had so many glorious testimonies of those things that our Lord has done. Now, I am just about as badly worried as I've ever been to stay on my feet. <laughs> uh, this is several weeks for me, and it's been much vision. And so the Lord has help me, to which I am very, very grateful for his loving kindness. Of course we are. And we just trust that, that he will be with us tonight and help us tonight. 
And now, I'm going to speak just a few moments uh, on a, a text, if it would be called a text. I'm not very good on taking a text because I very seldom ever stay with it. And I just, a uh, fellow just maybe read something. I think, now, when I go down to church tonight, I'm going to speak on this. I did this all my life. And just as sure as I go thinking I'm going to do this, I get down there and the Lord tells me to do something else. And I never try to announce what you're going to speak on. Just go ahead and do what the Lord says do, and that's all there is to it. And I just have to, as he gives it to me, why give it to the people. And sometimes it's so kind of rough, but it'll do you good. <laughs> it saved me, and it kept me happy all these 23 years now. And I've been very happy in Jesus Christ preaching the gospel. And I, there's only one regret that I have in my life, that is that I didn't know Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of my sins when I was just a little baby boy. And I tell you, parents, uh, you put the right kind of a home before your children. That's the thing to do. Because if I had a Christian home I'd been reared in, perhaps... I'd have been farther along with our Lord Jesus tonight, and there were more people have been saved, but my people was not a religious family. And uh, God just had by his uh, amazing grace to, to save me. And then since then, I've led several of them to the Lord. I baptized my mother. My father gave his heart to Christ, died in my arms. My grandfather, I baptized him at nearly 90 in, in the river, some of my brothers and so forth. No, and um, and my little my boy here, and then my little girl is seven. My other one's too young to be baptized yet. She's only two, so I uh, trust that she lives. Well, when she's old enough to be baptized, I will do that. And so she's already been committed to the Lord, or we call it dedication. So we just dedicate the baby to Lord. Try to follow the scripture just as close as we can. We never did see where Christ or any place in the Bible they ever baptized babies. They just brought them to the Lord, and that's the only scripture I can find. He took them up in his arms and blessed them. He said, Suffer, little children, to come to me. You want to sprinkle them, baptize them, that's okay. And he, just like taking these handkerchiefs. Many people anoint those handkerchiefs with oil. That's good. That's very fine. Oh, that would be all right to anoint them with oil. As long as God's a blessing, that's all right. See? But now, if you just uh, think of this, and bear with me a few minutes, Paul never anointed him with oil. They took off of his body. Was that right? They took from the body of Paul. Now, Paul knew that what he touched, it was blessed that he'd get the people. You know where I think Paul got that scripture from? You remember when the Shunammite woman, when her baby was dead, and she got to Elijah trying to find out why the baby had died? And Elijah had a stick in his hand. He told his servant, Gehazi, I believe it was, that, Take this stick and go forward. If anybody speaks to you, don't speak to him. Just go lay it on the baby. Now, Elijah knew that what he touched was blessed, that God was in him. But if he could get the Shunammite woman to believe that. But she didn't believe that. She knew God was in his prophet, but not the stick. So the stick didn't do the work. The stick would have done the same thing if the woman would have believed it. Don't you think so? Sure. And so, but when Elijah comes, the only thing he done was just lay his body up on the baby. And God give it its life back. Is that right? God was in his servant, and he, and that's what the woman believed, and that's just what had to happen. I see him coming to the platform on a call of prayer line. I start to pass them by, and the first thing you know, I, I, I can tell her they don't want that. They don't want to pray for them, lay my hands on them or something. That's, and it won't, it won't be until they, that happens. That's just the way they, they're looking for it. One woman, one person in the Bible, Jeriah said, come lay your hands on my daughter. That is Jesus' hand. But a Roman said, I'm not worthy that you come into my house. Just speak the word. See, it just depends on which way you believe. That's what it will be. Now, if I would call this a little text to talk to you tonight, I'm going to speak on God's provided way. Now, reading of this text of, the, of Elijah, this great prophet of God, and then about how that we're to call the sick, uh, when the sick are, call the elders, rather, and anoint the sick with oil and pray over them, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And he said, the affectional 
fervent prayer of a righteous man. Now, a righteous man is not a sinless man. Or you notice he said Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. He had his ups and downs and his differences, and the scripture of his life proves that he had his ups and downs like we do. He had his times of wandering and his times of his temper got away from him, and he had a lot of things that, that went wrong. But he was still a righteous man because he confessed his unworthiness and believed in God. So that's what made him righteous. We are not righteous within ourselves. We are righteous through Jesus Christ. I could not be sanctified within myself. I am sanctified through Jesus Christ who stands in in the presence of God in my place. And it isn't my holiness. It's his holiness. My holiness won't work at all. But his does because God's done accepted him. And then accepting him, he had to accept me because I'm in him. (laughs) That's what makes it real, isn't it? And we don't have to depend on ourselves. Now, that doesn't make us say we can sin. Brother, if you sin, you're just you're just away from God, that's all. There's only one thing to do is confess it and get right with God. As long as you desire to sin, the desire of sin still in your heart, then it's time to spade out the altar to let things taken out. Now, you will sin. You're bound to sin because you just can't help it. Uh, you, but not willfully sin. He that sins willfully after to see the knowledge of the truth. See, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. But every day you are bound to sin, and you are bound to be backsliding constantly. So it takes a constant prayer to God. Paul said, "I die daily." And if Paul had to die daily, how much more am I going? I would have to stay dead all the time. <laughs> if, if Paul had to die daily to stay right with God, and so. We'll all have to do that. Just die out to yourself, and that's getting God's way. Now, there's only two ways of anything. That's the right way and the wrong way. And them ways are your ways and God's way. And you can't be in your way and God's way at the same time. You've got to forget your own way to get in God's way. And you've got to get out of your own way to get in God's way. Or as long as you're in your own way, you're out of his way. So forsake your ways, forsake your thoughts, forsake everything, and just rely on one thing on thus says the law. That's all. Then you know you're right. Though you can't see it, none of the senses will say it's right. Every one of them will say it's wrong. But you know it's right because God said so. That's what makes it right. Now, that his provided way has been his word. It is his word. God's provided way for the human to live is not by your senses. It's by his word. Now, God put man first in his own image, which was in the image of God, and God is a supernatural being. He was a supernatural man. And then he put him in five senses, and none of those five senses declare his heavenly home. Those five senses declare his earthly home. And God gave him five senses to contact his earthly home and not to contact God. His sense, these these five senses control the human body and two senses control the inside man. That's faith and unbelief. And you possess one or the other tonight. Now, in the Garden of Eden, there were two trees. One of them was the tree of knowledge. One was the tree of life. And man can never know God by knowledge. So no matter how well you get educated, how smart your pastor is, how many degrees he's taken, you can't, God is not known by education, neither is he known by scientific research. The only way God is known is by faith. No matter if you don't know the difference between split beans and coffee, if you absolutely by faith accept God and it's bound to be an act of faith. And when man was eating on this tree of life, he had eternal life. But when he left that tree of life and went on the tree of knowledge, the first bite he took, he separated your fellowship with God. And every time that he bites off of that tree of knowledge, he destroys himself. You heard some time ago when they had a great strike on him. And they were, I was going along the road, and I see a load of coals coming up the road. And I said, well, praise the Lord, the strike's off. I guess the miners went to work. I thought, should I praise God for that? Well, I thought electricity would go off and then. But if you just remember, friends, that every bit of knowledge, 
Now the first thing man bit off of this tree over here, the tree of, of knowledge, and every time he bites off of that tree, he just pulls himself that much farther away from God. And when you think that you can get all your education, I've had man to come to me that had all kinds of degrees and everything else and said, Brother Bradham, I'd like to get saved. That's right. Man who's doctors of divinity with D D double L D. That's right. What does that mean? Nothing. Just means you got a lot up here, but what about down here? <laughs> See? That's where God is not known by knowing genealogy, it's by neonology where God knows. You don't find God by studying books, you find God on your knees. And the first time now look, he bit himself off gunpowder. What did he do with that? That was knowledge, a tree of knowledge. He killed his comrades. The next thing he bit him an automobile. Automobile killed four and all the wars put together. Knowledge still. He's got himself a hydrogen bomb now. I wonder what he's going to do with that. <laughs> See? He's constantly destroying himself by eating off the tree of knowledge. So just forget about knowledge and all your puffed up knowledge. And just remember, it's thus saith the Lord, and that's what God wants you to believe is his word. That's right. That's God's provided way for man and always has been. And every man that's ever took God at his word, and every man that ever amounted to anything in the world was man who took God at his word. That's right. You just run back to George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and whatever you want to, great Americans and on down through the history of, of great men, you'll find out they were a man who trusted God. And, and that's the God's way for it. Now when man, well, God was taking care of man over here, but when he went to ship for himself, he found out it was a hard job. So he found out that he couldn't stand the presence of God without having a covering, and God provided him a covering. And he made some skins and put over him, so he was covered up so he could meet God. That was God's provided way. Now man tried to make himself away by knowledge. He said, now look, I'm naked. So he sewed some fig leaves together and made them some aprons, but they found out that wouldn't work. So they had to take not their way, but God's way. And man today are trying to make themselves a way. They say, well, now I go to church and... And I do this, and I'm a good man. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But still, that's not God's way for you. God's way, he had to kill something for you. That was his son, Christ Jesus, and only, and the blood has was, is, and will always be God's provided way of escape for any person that's a sinner or any need. It's through the blood. It's the only way in the world you, God has a way provided. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Here a lot long ago in one of the great famous churches, many of their members sitting here tonight, when I got an article out of the newspaper where they even wanted to take blood out of their hymn books, blood, the blood songs out of the hymn books, so that we don't have a slaughter block religion. We want something nice and pious. Well, there's, that's down the equal with Buddha or, or some of those others. Listen, you take the blood out of there, you've got no more salvation. That's all. Because blood only come, uh, salvation only comes through life, and life is in the bloodstream. The blood was offered, and only through the shedding of blood is there remission of sin. I like the old-fashioned blood strode religion. That's me. Because God looked upon that and accepted it, and that blood was shed for us, and we've got to accept that. And then just by accepting it won't only do. God's got to vindicate back that he has accepted you. That's the thing. You can accept him, but then if he accepts you, stay right there until he does accept you. And then when he does, he seals you into his kingdom by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you have, you're secured until the day of redemption. That's right. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the next revival. Uh -uh. Until the day of redemption. Is that right? There's no ups and downs, ins and outs. You really get into God if you're really in Him, not just impersonating something, but you're really in Christ. You're on one alternative, your whole heart sold out, every bridge is burned behind you, and you got your affection set on things which are above, and you run the race with patience and set before you. Amen. Notice, God making a way. He makes a, a provided way. He called a sheep. I always wonder why we was lacking in the sheep in the Bible. I don't know where there's any sheep raisers here or not, but I've herded a few sheep, raised partly in cattle herded and everything, and all, practically the biggest part of my life. 
in and out on ranches for, well, since I was a boy. But if you ever seen anything helpless, is to get a sheep lost. When a sheep's lost, he just simply can't find his way. That's all. He'll just stand right there and wait till the coyotes get him or something. He, he just, he's just lost. He's helpless. And that's the way a man is when you're a lost brother. I don't care how much reforming you try to do, you're absolutely helpless until the shepherd comes get you. That's you can't save yourself. There's no way at all to do it. Uh, a leopard could lick his spots just as hard as he could. You could scrub him with sal soda. Anything you want to, it'll only brighten the spots. So there's no way we can reform ourselves or lay aside this or turn a new page. There's only one thing left for us to do. That's except what the Word said do. Be born again or lost. That's true now. God, Jesus Christ said that. Except the man be born of water and of spirit, he will in no wise enter into the kingdom. Whether he's little, big, ignorant, or whatever he is, he's got to meet those conditions. Jesus said so. And you know what a birth is? is a regeneration, a new creation. A man becomes a new creation in Christ. And by accepting his word. Now, we can think of the time, and, the, and always the man who takes God's provided way is always a man who's looked down upon as a fanatic. He's always, through all ages, considered by the world a fanatic. Never, never in any time was God's religion and salvation of this earth ever popular with the people of the world. He said, if you love... The world knows their own. That's right. If you love the world, the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you. So it's always been a hard, struggling way, walking by faith. But the, it's not hard struggling to the man. It's the world looks down upon them and say, well, these people must be crazy. They act silly. And it's always been that way because he's accepted the way out that God has provided for him. In time of the Andalusian world, could you imagine our father Noah out there when he perhaps come home one afternoon and from his work he was a farmer, told his wife, the Lord spoke to me today and told me to go build a big ark. <laughs> Why, she'd say, Noah, how could you build an ark? You're a farmer. How could you ever make an ark? Well, God said it was going to rain and it was going to flood the whole world over and everybody was going to be drowned. And he told me if I follow his word, I would escape it. And I tell you, that's the way we always escape is following God's program. That's the only way we'll ever be able to do it. I can see Noah out there building away on this ark, sitting out in the middle of a big dry field where there's never been a drop of rain fall from heaven, never had there been a, anything come out of the heavens as rain, never been a cloud in the sky, and yet Noah out there building away on an ark. Could you imagine how silly that looked? Why, to the carnal mind, that man was insane. I can hear the people coming home from the work in the afternoons down in, in the city saying, Say, you believe that rain story they're telling out there? What do you think about that old crane? Why, isn't that the craziest guy you ever seen out there building away on, a, on an ark saying that water is going to fall down from heaven? Well, the man's crazy. There's nothing up there. God's always watered through irrigation down here on... I said, there's no such a thing, but God told him that was the way of escape, and that's the way he was building a way. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so would it be in the coming of the Son of Man. There would be a program on earth that would seem just that crazy to people. That's right, just that foolish. But yet it would be God's program, because it would be taking God at his word, and they will be building a way on an ark, and that ark is Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. Trying to get converts into him. Now, God told Noah that that was the only way of escape there would be. And it was the only way. And he preached for 120 years. And the people ignored him, laughed at him, made fun of him, mocked, scoffed, as it was in the days of Noah, eating, how, what kind of a world was he having? Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, all kinds of different things, just as they're doing now. They had a civilization even was greater than what we've got now. If you don't think that's so, try, let, let us try to reproduce the pyramid down there. Let us try to build that. Or the speech, there's something on that order. Let us try to make a mummy like the Egyptians did in their bombing. Find out how 
how far we are away from the civilization of that day. We're far, far away from it. In a day of a greater civilization than this, a man out there building on an ark that was said it was going to rain and it never had even been a cloud in the skies for 2,000 years since the world had been in existence. There had never been a cloud, a clap of thunder, lightning, or nothing else. But yet God told him it was going to do it because his great spirit was going to push this world out of its cater out there and lean it back and cause clouds to come. If God said so, it's going to be just the way God said it was going to be. And Noah built right away, pitching the ark, putting a tar in it just the same as this thing was set in water. Not only wasn't going to rain, but it was going to come a flood that was going to wash the whole world over. And Noah believed God, warned of God, moved by faith, and built the ark, working in God's provided way. My, all I can just imagine, that just beating away in the last part was on, the people standing around laughing and saying, hey, what are you going to do with that big old thing? Why making fun of him? Everything, he just built away and stood on the end of it, preaching just as hard as he could. And then finally there come a day when God got tired of it. And I can just imagine seeing the funny feeling coming over the earth, just about like there is today, everybody wrestles. What's going to happen? You go out on the street and talk to any sinner you want to. You can go into a bar room and everybody knows that something's fixing to happen. Right. Something's fixing to happen. Judgment is on the world. And they see it. Could you imagine a lamb out here eating in the field? And the poor little fellow can't see nothing, but he begins to feel restless. There's something fixing to happen. Crunching over yonder the bushes is a lion coming up. It's just something about it. He can tell it. There's something fixed to happen. He can't see that line, but he knows there's something wrong. That's the way it is today, brother. They're setting a scene today with all this conglomeration of blackness and darkness and sin and things that's going on in this world. They're setting a stage for the greatest drama that was ever acted out in all ages. The coming of Jesus Christ. And man cannot... We cannot have the last day until people get in the spirit of the last day. We cannot have a healing service here until people get in the spirit of a healing service. We cannot have a filling of the Holy Ghost until people get in that kind of atmosphere. And the people within the atmosphere in that day to bring judgment up on the earth, and they're in the same atmosphere today, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and all this kind of a thing like that. And the uh, glory of God is being preached and demonstrated in the power of the Holy Ghost setting forth uh, an example of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that's going to take the church into glory just as certain as I'm standing here that's right and men are ignoring it paying no attention to it walking away from it because they're in the spirit of the last days the world's got to get like this God would be unjust to pour his wrath out upon a just people they have ignored him and walked away, and Satan has captured him. And there they're standing in that time. But God has a provided way today, a way of escape. That way is Jesus Christ by being born again. I can see the first time a lightning come up and flash across the sky. Noah said, come on, honey. This boy said to the wife, come on. They got in the ark. Well, the people said, I wonder what happened. A blast went off somewhere. But I'll tell you, there was such a fall that even the animal creation knew that something was wrong. I can see the old mother bird sitting up there and the father bird just was singing away. That first clap of lightning, the first time the signs and wonders begin to happen. I can see father bird say, Mother bird, come on. Let's get right straight to the ark because that's exactly what Noah said was going to happen. That's the Spirit of God moving in us. Let's go to the ark. I can see the old mother camel out there eating on the side of the hill, the father camel over here, when the first bolt of lightning went through the sky and the signs and wonders began to appear, I hear father camel say to mother camel, come on, that's it, something's tugging on the inside of here, something's moving me, I've got to get into the ark, I tell you, God had ordained that they'd come into the ark, and I believe that today, when the signs and wonders are appearing everywhere of the coming of the Son of God, I believe that every man or woman is ordained of God. They hear the voice of God, hears that tug, they shove to the ark as fast as they can go. Get into safety. For it's God's provided way for man to escape. That's right. You see signs appearing, wonders appearing, mysterious things are happening. Sure, flying saucers through the air and everything else. Jesus said there'd be 
signs in the heaven above and in the earth below, pillars of fire and vapors of smoke. This shall come to pass before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. He spoke all these things of sea roaring, tidal waves breaking and everything, man's heart failing, greatest time of heart trouble we've ever had, fear, perplexed of time, distress between the nations. Oh, my! How the prophet said that horseless carriages here that graze in the broadways and see my torches and run like lightning. Everything that was spoke of, we're looking in the face of it today. What is it? It's God's warning to you people, prepare to meet God. Get ready! Why should I prepare to meet God, Brother Branham? Brother, you prepare for a wedding. You prepare for anything else. When you see these things coming, you prepare to meet God. Every time you see a gray hair in your head, that means you better prepare to meet God. Every time you pass an undertaker's establishment, that means prepare to get ready to meet God. Every time a baby's born, remember, prepare to meet God. Every time a funeral procession passes, prepare to meet God. Every time you hear the gospel as a warning, prepare to meet God. God has a way of escape. Get into Jesus Christ now where you're safe. Each one of those animals went right in two by two into the ark. God always makes a way for those who are really wanting to escape the wrath of God. Come on down. We can think of many things. I can think of Job, one of the oldest books in the Bible. I can think of Job standing there, broke out and boiled. Sometimes people said, well, Job has sinned. A lot of times someone says today, well, because this person had this happen, this had this happen, that shows they're sinners. That doesn't show they're sinners. Not at all. Sometimes God does permit sickness to come. But if you know in your heart like Job did, that you were clean and clear before God, Job had some comforters to come to and sit with their backs turned to him for seven days, accused him to be a secret sinner. But Job couldn't understand. Brother, thou speakest like a foolish woman. The Lord gave and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brother, he had you know one thing, that God was the alternative. God was all he had to hold on to. So blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I come into this world naked, I'll go out naked, but blessed be the name of the Lord. A man in that condition, a man that's willing to hold on to God's word, God's under obligation to send him something. God's under an obligation to take him to it. That night, you people sitting here wanting divine healing. You believe that there is such a thing as divine healing? If you believe it with all your heart, God's under obligation to introduce it to you. Amen. Because God's Word teaches it. There was a prophet. That's right. And there was a prophet. Back there, he didn't know just exactly what the will of God was for him. He waited. He didn't know what to do. So the first thing you know, when... Everything seemed to go wrong. His comforters wouldn't uh, comfort him. And then God was under obligation. Down from the east come a little fellow, Elihu. Elihu stood to him and said, Now look, we put it in childlike form. Job said, Now look, I, I see the trees when they die, they live again. The flowers when they die, they live again. But man lay it down. Yes, he gives up the ghost. He wastes away. His sons come to honor him. But where is he? Oh, that thou were hiding in the grave. And so forth. He spoke. And Elihu said, Now wait, Job. I like this. He said, Wait, Job. You're accusing God wrong. Now that flower hasn't sinned. God has a provided way for that flower to live again. Up in the north country where I come from, we raise the ladies up there like flowers like you do. And then little flowers will be pretty in the summertime. Then the frost will come along. Some of them are young, some are old. But when the frost comes along, bite them. That's death. They bow their little head. First thing you know, the petals drop off. A little black seed drops out. Then they have a funeral procession for them. The fall rains come across and it goes to crying down. And it bears a little seed in the ground. Cold winter comes along. I guess it's full four or five inches up there now. See? Now the little petals are gone. The bulb dried up. The little old seed has bursted open. The pulp's run out. Now that'll go on through December, January, February, March, April, May. Now May comes along. Last of April, first of May. The seed's gone. The pulp's gone. The petal's gone. The stalk's gone. 
Everything there was of that flower is gone. It can be seen. Is it gone? No. God has a provided way. There's a little germ of life laying there somewhere. Just as sure as that sun rises down in the east and begins to shine warm up on the ground, it lives again. Why? God provided a way for it to live again. If God made a way for a fire to live again, what about a man that's made in his image? How God has made a way for us to live again. But Job speaking, seeing that man was cut off from God because of his sin, his transgression. And L.O.U. began to explain it to him. How that his, his transgression had took him away from God. Then Job began to think of it. I can imagine seeing sand. And after a while, L.O.U. said, But there's coming one. A just one, a one that will stand in the breach, put his hand on a sinful man and a holy God, and then the man will rise again out of the ground just like the flower rises out of the ground. So now you watch the flower come up the spring of the year, but you say, man, lay it down, he give us up the ghost. Where is he? Because he got out of God's provided way. But there's coming one who's going to put him back in the way. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think of that, my innermost being screams out. What can I do to get this to man? Yeah, there's coming one who will place him back in the way where this one will stand and put his hand on this, this gap of sin here and he'll go in and take sin upon himself and breathe the way back. That man can come out of the ground again. Job begin to see it being a prophet. He began to listen to this little prophet, Elihu, and the first thing you know, Job raised up. God put his binoculars down over his eyes. He looked away down 4,000 years. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And at the last days he'll stand on the earth, though the skin worms destroy his body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. Mine eyes shall behold and not another. Yes, he saw the resurrection of Christ. He said, My eyes shall be holding out another. He seen Jesus. He knew he was in God's provided way. He had life in him. He said, I know I'll raise it that day because I'm believing in him. At the last day, Jesus was to stand and to bridge that way for man. How God has always made a way of escape for those who believe. I can think of Moses, the children of Israel down there in Egypt. When they were way down in Egypt, hidden, beaten by the Egyptian taskmasters, God made a way of escape. He sent a fellow down with the name of Moses. And before Moses could bring them out, they had sinned and got away from God. And the only way Moses could do was to obey God. And God sent him down there and told him to take a lamb and to make a sacrifice and to place the blood upon the little of the door, upon the doorpost. I want you to notice how beautiful that is. The lintel, the top of the door, and on the doorpost, not on the bottom. The blood of Christ isn't to look down at, it's to look up to. To right perfectly in the door, the shape of the cross. Every father in that day was a priest of his own family. And it was up to each individual family to kill a lamb. The lamb must be kept up 14 days. Tried. Perfect type of Christ. Christ, before all of his accusers, yet there wasn't a blemish on him. Let's take a little look and see if they can find any blemish on this Lamb of God. Of course, you know all of his friends would testify of him. Let's look at his enemy. His arch enemy, Judas is a character. When he looked at him hanging there, he said, I have betrayed innocent blood. Throw the money down at the high priest's feet, went and got a rope and hung himself. Let's look at the Roman centurion. When he felt the earth shaking and going on when Jesus died, he put his hand over his heart and said, Truly, that was the Son of God. The Father himself shut off the visions of heaven. It turned midnight dark in the middle of the day, according to what the prophet said would take place. God said, That's my beloved Son. Certainly did. Look at that pilot, that great fellow sitting out there on the judgment seat. Got him out early in the morning. He's all stewed up in his mind. All bitter and high and kind of hated this fellow. They brought him out there and set him on the judgment seat early in the morning to make a judgment. 
and they brought him up to you, wanting to do some miracles for him or, or please him some way. And notice, he's just ready to condemn Jesus. I hear something coming down the road just as hard as he can come. What is it? It's a horse coming from over the palace. A man jumps off the horse, runs up there. What is it? It's one of the palace guards. He takes the letter out of his pocket, falls down before Pilate, hands it to him. He picks it up, opens it up. He's standing there in his fury, ready to condemn Jesus. He begins to read. His hands begin to shake. His knees begin to meet together. What is on that letter? What would cause that cruel emperor to change in a few minutes? What would take place to make a man like that sinny? Oh, there, an emperor. What would make him do that? Let's look over his shoulders just a minute and find out. It's coming from a pagan wife. Has nothing to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. He said, bring me some water. I'll wash my hands. I have nothing to do with it. Hallelujah. God was making a way for him there if he had only accepted it. That's right. Yes, sir. He's made a way for you tonight. Are you going to do the same thing Pilate did? Wash him off your hands? You'll never do it. Some people justify Pilate. No, sir. Pilate was not justified but washed his hands. You do, if Pilate was justified, you can be the same. You hear it, see it every night here. You can wash your hands and say, well, I'll have nothing to do with it. I'll return back. You can't get it off your hands. Right. You know the end of Pilate, he plunged himself to death up there near Norway and Sweden. And every year yet, people go up there to watch that blue water come up the same that he washed his hands from Jesus. Might be a superstition, but they'd rather there see it anyhow. Every year. No, sir, you can't wash it off. And when down there in Egypt, God told him, he said, call out now. I love this. He said, I'm going to make a difference. God does make a difference. I'm going to make a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And this difference is going to be by the shedding of blood of a lamb. Called out, separated. God always calls for separators. A lot of people in the church say, we want this young fellow. He just got out of college. and I tell you, he used to take a social drink. He, oh, he, he's a good mixer. God don't want mixers. He wants separators. Separate me, Paul. Separate yourself from the things of the world. God have mercy. Give us some old time preachers that will preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Call back, black and white, white, lay the gospel work. Will, as John the Baptist said, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Give us some more preachers like that. We'll get back to God's way about things then. Amen. All right. I want you to notice. Then he said, I want you to take the lamb and kill it in the evening. Perfect type of Christ, killed in the evening. And then the whole assembly of Israel was to witness the death. They did it, Christ. And the blood was to be put on the door. For that night, the death angel was going to ride the land. And everywhere there was his blood was going to be death. And I tell you, brother, if there ever was a time that the death angel is riding the land, it's tonight. He comes to the church door where the priest stands. And a church that's denying the blood and the power of Jesus Christ there's gold on there. The glory of God has departed. The death angel goes in and that settles it. They become formal and dead and denying God's power. And the first thing you know, death is all over the whole group of them. You never get them to believe anything. They can't believe it. Now watch this death angel. I can see the Father. Now they were exposed when the sun went down and darkness set in. They once come under the blood of that lamb. They had to stay under there until marching orders is given. Brother, this is good for you Nazarenes now. Look. Coming out of the blood. Once under that blood, put it on the middle of the door and on the post. But every time a man comes through that door into this home, he stays there until marching orders come to go out of Egypt. I like that. <laughs> Stay there. Now I can see the young ladies going to the parties that night to their young Israelite girls saying, come on, Rebecca, and so forth, come on out, and we're going to, I can't do it. Why? While well, we're under the blood. Oh, my. We're under the blood. Oh, come on. Let's go. Nonsense, that old crazy religion your daddy's got there. But look, something in my heart tells me that I mustn't 
go on beyond that blood. And on they went to their big parties and so forth. Then along about midnight, there began to come a strange feeling. It's like coming over the world again now. It spoke up a while ago. Something's wrong. Great howling darkness set up on the earth. Winds begin to blow. I can see the little boy at this home here where we're going to go. Look at him. He says, Hey, uh, what is that? I, 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 I kind of feel funny. I see all the young girls that at the dances. They're hurrying up home. Oh, my. Too late to pray then. Now, the first thing you know, they begin to, he begins to look around. I can hear the little boy say, Daddy, uh, did, did, did the word say that the elder son was going to be killed in the home? Yes. Well, Daddy, what about our home? Son, we're just as safe as we can be. How do you know you're safe? We've obeyed God's word. We got, we're under the bug. I can hear him say just a little later. After a while, I look out the window, little boy does. Look, there comes two big black wings moving through the air. That's death. And if there's any time that the black wings have struck the country today, we've had earthquakes, we've had pestilence, we've had all kinds of things that could come to this land, and all like they did in Egypt, but the last plague that hit Egypt before destruction was death. And the last plague that hit the church is a spiritual death. Right. That's the last thing. The dying. The churches are dying out. Getting away. Oh, we're having protracted meetings, but no revival. No revival. They said the great revival in America. Tell me where it's at. Where is it at? We haven't even struck the first phase of a revival in America. The reason of it is that we're trying to teach man theology and things instead of bringing them back God's provided way by the baptism of the Holy Ghost and send them back to God by the way of Calvary. We're trying to get them into the church and join them into the church and baptize them into the church and shake their hands into the church and pack their letters into the church, but they've got to be born in the church of the living God, and that's the reason we haven't got no revival. What we need is an old-fashioned stirring again for an old-time John Wesley revival where they stood and preached all night long and the power of the Holy Ghost falling over the audience. That's what we need again. Amen. I kind of feel religious right now. So listen, friends. Let me tell you something. When I think about the great need of this nation, we don't need more seminaries. We don't need more preachers. What we need is what preachers we got filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what we need. True as I'm standing here, that's the truth. Now, I want you to notice something else. That little boy, and we watched these wings go down. When it hit a home, you hear the scream come. But I hear the little boy say, Daddy, are you sure that that blood's on there? I see him walk out and look over the door and say, Yes, sir, son, she's covered. These wings start towards that home. Or when she starts to come down like this, she sees the blood. And he said, When I see the blood, I'll pass, will pass over you. I'll go over that's right. All over, God's provided way of escape. God's provided way tonight for you to escape this cold, formal, indifferent, ungodly condition that's existing in the America today, called in the name of Christianity. Everything that Christ told them not to do, they do it. And do it in the name of Christ. Only Christ said, heal the sick and raise the dead and cleanse the lepers and cast out devils, and they deny that. And they educate their preachers and send them out with theology. Just exactly what he said not to do. And then do it in the name of Christ. Amen. Brother, that's the truth. I may not be able to say it the way I ought to say it, but I say it the way it's in my heart. It may be barefooted, but it's, it's, it's time that man handle the gospel, not sissy fight with a pair of rubber gloves on. Tell them the truth! Yeah. Right. They might hate you here, but they'll love you at the judgment bar. That's right. We're not sitting around. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not sissy by. It's the greatest thing that a man ever done. God, God never judges a man. I, somebody say, isn't he a man? He's got shoulders that wide and arms that big. He might be a brute, but he might not have an ounce of man in him. That's right. You don't judge man by... Muscle, you judge man by character. I've seen men that weigh 200 pounds and throw a baby out of a mother's arms to ravish her, 
for his own beastly lust. That's right. You don't judge a man with a callus in his hand, but with a bag to the knees in his pants where he's been praying. Hallelujah. That's what we need today some more, man, like that. Got real godly, gold passion, Holy Ghost conviction. I'd rather have a man like that with my boy if he didn't even know his ABCs. To send out your by took some more to broom safe packs and pray for him until they come through the Holy Ghost and have all the teachers there is in the world trying to poke theology in him. Amen. Brother, that's the truth. What we need today is get back to God's provided way for sinners. They're down there when they marched out over there. They didn't have, they got marching orders. They started out. When they crossed the bridge, went across, God made a bridge to the bottom of the sea for them. When they got over there, when they needed something to drink, the water's all run out. There was a pool there, but the water was bitter. They couldn't drink it. God had a provided tree. He just walks over there, cuts the tree down, throws it into the pool, drink all you want to. God has a provided way. We're in the journey, and God's got a way for everything we got a need of. Hallelujah. God have mercy. Sure, there's some way to crack this city here for the glory of God. We can only find it. That's why, what can we do? What can I do? God just reveal it. Now look. There was a way, there stood a, a bush on the side of the hill. Moses cut the bush down, throw it in there to drink all you want to, it's good. After a while, when they needed water again, it was way out in the desert. God said, go smite the rock. The rock. After they'd seen through every, probably every little place they could find, every always, got under every place, raised up the rocks, everywhere else where there was a spring, no water at all, and then God done the ridiculous. <laughs> the driest thing there was in the desert say go speak there there's where the water's at how it seems today when you think that by the healing and power of God and the baptism of the Holy Ghost ought to come out of Vatican City or something God takes a bunch of little holy rollers down in the corner maybe don't roll their ABCs and there's where the water lay right you don't want to deal in pomp and things like that he's has mercy on the ignorant. Peter and John was ignorant and unlearned man. The Bible said they were absolutely ignorant. But they had to take notice to them they'd been with Jesus. That's the main thing. That's right. They had enough faith to heal the man at the gate called beautiful. Peter had enough power of God him to tell him and I, you are lying. That's right. You kept back that money. And Sapphire, you do the same thing. Cured them so bad they had a heart attack and died. They packed them out and buried them. Amen. That same God lives today. That same program is God's program for the day. God moving through the wilderness yonder. Come a time they needed something to eat. When he needed something to eat, God just rained manna down out of heaven. God provided ways. How are we going to eat? We're out here with no bread, there's no wheat, there's no corn. What are we going to do? Don't make any difference. God said, come out here. I'll take care of the rest of it. And manna rained down out of heaven. Isn't that glorious? Just rain manna down. All you have to do is go out and pick it up. But don't pick up too much of it at one time. Of course, you try to get enough tonight to make it last tomorrow night. you got wiggle tails in it. Rotten. That's about what's the half of the church tonight. Stagnated with what we call in the South up there, wiggle tails. That's what's my lot of people experience today. Saying, oh, I, I got blessed way back under 10 years ago. What about now? How are you prayed up now? Minds me of a little Irish mother coming across from Ireland. She's going over to New York to meet her daughter. On the road over there, sent SOS. The ship was about to sink. Uh, they're playing some kind of jazz music down in the, on the floor, all of them dancing. The captain, the skipper, come down to her and said, Just a moment, everybody. Said, Change your music. If we can hold out 30 minutes, we'll be there. If we don't, we're going to the bottom of the sea. And everybody, they begin to pray near my God to thee. And everybody falls on the floor and begin to pray. Little old Irish mother, the little old dress hooked up around this winter on the home sea. She said, Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, the skipper said, Madam, what's the matter with you? He said, I'm happy. He said, You misunderstood me. He said, Did you know I said in 30 minutes from now we may be in the bottom of the sea? He said, I understood you. He said, Why don't you pray? She said, I'm prayed up. No, that's great. All right? I'm prayed up. He said, Oh, glory, praise the Lord. He said, How can you do that, lady? What are you shouting about if you're afraid of? I said, well, you said in 30 minutes from now, if we held out, we'd be in New York. That's right. 
If we didn't hold out, we'd be in the bottom of the sea. That's right. She said, Glory. She said, I got a daughter in New York. I'm going to see. And if, I, if we don't hold out, I got one in glory. So we'll see one in 30 minutes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the way you want to live. Hallelujah. Right. Straight up and ready to go. Amen. Walk in God's provided way. Ready for any minute. Amen. Where you don't know what minute he'll call you to come in, in his presence. There I can see the Israelites as they went through. First thing you know, they didn't have any remedies out there. Dr. Moses couldn't get a hold of the right kind of a serum, so they had some snake bites. So God provided a way. Is that right? He made a serpent, made it out of branch, and put it on a pole. And the only thing the people had to do is go look at that pole, that serpent on that pole, and believe that God put it up there and they got healed. Some of them said, well, I'm going down here to see if I can get some snake root and see if I can put it on. The other said, oh, John, where are you going? He said, I'm going to get some snake root and put it on here to see if it's healed. He said, I'm just going to take God's provided way. Just look at the serpent and live. And he lived. The snake root failed. <laughs> hey, man, God's got a remedy tonight. Hallelujah. That remedy is of Jesus Christ, his son, by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You think I'm crazy. Maybe I am. I am, I'm happy. So I'm more happier this way than I was the other way. So just, I'd rather be like this. See? So I'm, I'm just feeling wonderful. All right. Yes, sir. God had a provided way. One time there's a fellow named Elijah. The Lord told him that this country is so sinful, so I'm going to send judgment up on it. But Elijah, I'm going to make a way of escape for you. <laughs> what are you going to do, Lord? I want you to go up there and sit down with a pool of of Cedrus up on top of that mountain yonder. Elijah walked through the streets and said, well, it ain't going to rain, so I'll call for it. I'm going up there and sit on the mountain. And when the drought comes, could you imagine those people come on and say, look at that crazy old crank up there. Sitting up there with that little old spring on top of that mountain, you know the water ain't up there. But God kept it running. <laughs> I'm so glad he does. <laughs> yeah, sitting up on top of the mountain. Now, but that old guy's dried up up there. No, no, no. He's doing just, he said, God's provided way. God said, you go up there and sit down because I've already commanded the crows to feed you. They said, that poor old crank sitting up there, starving to death. Well, he was doing better off. I bet he's better off than a lot of you are here tonight. He had some colored servants to wait on him. I bet you haven't got that. <laughs> yes, sir. Crows come by and waited on him. Is that right? That's right. He had colored porters. Hey, but you haven't got that. They come by and waited on him, the crows, as they passed by. Some preacher said to me not long ago, I said, Billy, do you mean to tell me that you believe that them crows brought that fell of food? I said, that's what the Bible said. I believe it. Now, said, I want to ask you something. said, how in the world did those crows get them sandwiches and bring it to Elijah? I said, I don't know. I said, the only thing, the crows got it. The crows brought it. Elijah received it. That settled it. I said, this is exactly like now. I can't tell you what makes me act like this. The only thing you know, God taught it. The Bible said so. The Holy Ghost brought it. I received it. I just have a good time. I don't know how it comes. I just, it's just here. I don't know. I don't know. God said so. So I just, I just eat it. God, Holy Ghost brings it. I say, yes, Lord. Well, they're going to call you Holy Lord. I don't care, Lord. I just love it. It's just good. I just keep on eating. Stand it down. Amen. Just give me a bigger body to stand it. That's all. I can hear him say, oh my, fainting right over trying to find, and that old preacher sitting up there was supposed to be the fanatic, sitting down, not, not worried about a thing, mm -hmm. sitting there all day long saying, oh Lord, I love you, praise the Lord. God, I just praise you. Crow come by and say, Elijah, here you are. Take this great big sandwich and said, oh my, that fellow's out there gnawing their tongue, just get right down to the brook and drink water, or you, and you get all crazy. <laughs> That's the way it is, brother. They think that we're crazy because we got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Brother, we're drinking from a fountain that never runs dry. Of the everlasting waters of life that springs up to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Towards God's provided way. Certainly it is. Don't try to join your church and shake hands with your preacher. Get right to God. Hallelujah. That's the way to do it. God's provided way for you to do it. He'll make a way every time of escape. If you just believe him. You believe it? Yes, sir. He made a way of escape for Elijah. Then when it finally comes to the time, we'll go rain. God was told Elijah to go there and get ready for things. When Elijah got ready for the revival in Israel, then he said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go get me 12 stones and roll them here together. 
Now that was setting things in order. He was doing God's provided way. He went and got a stone for each tribe of Israel. But you know what's the matter today? We try to roll up a Pentecostal stone and say, this is it. <laughs> the Methodists roll up a stone and say, this is it. But God wants us to roll up everyone together and have an old-fashioned Holy Ghost pouring out on the whole church everywhere. <laughs> oh, brother, did that go home. I felt that. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what we need today, brother. Bring every believer together and preach the gospel. Don't hold anything back but preach the full gospel of Christ until the baptism of the Holy Ghost is poured out upon all the church. That's the only way to have a revival. Elijah said, now get everything together. Give me a stone here to represent each one of them. Honey, sacrifice up for it. Walked out there and he said, now Lord, let it be known that thou art the God of heaven and I am your prophet. And the fire began to fall. Brother, when the Methodists can forget that they're just the only people on the earth and the Baptists, they're the only, Pentecostals, they're the only, we can all get ourselves together and say, Lord, send the fire, we're going to get somewhere. <laughs> That's right. When the one this Pentecost, the two this Pentecost, the three this Pentecost, the five this Pentecost, and all of them can get their heads together. When all the Methodists can get about sprinkling or whether you're baptized or whether you're the poor or whether you do this, and everybody gets together and forget about all them little things and say, God, send the power. Everything will take care of itself. Get the heart right with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost will take care of the rest of it. Yes, sir. Amen. I believe in that kind of revival. Get God's provided way. Roll up the stone of salvation. I believe that. Roll up the stone of the speaking tongues. I believe that. Roll up the stone of interpretation. I believe that. Roll up the stone of divine healing. I believe that. Brother, get ready for the fire now. <laughs> That's yours. Now, I'm just going to forget all about my theology, Lord. I'm just rolling up these stones. I'm going to lay myself right across and say, Oh, Lord, burn me up. He'll do it. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll get you. That's the way you want to do, brother. Take everything out of your mind and let God's Word be the provided way. Not the Methodist ritual, not to this ritual or that ritual, or this theology or that theology. Let the Bible be right. God said, Let my Word be true and ever man's alive. The last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Lutheran, and everybody else. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Call out from among my people. It should be the partakers of their sins. I will receive you. Now, sin is not this moral habit, you know. Some things I say, well, this man smokes, that's a sin. No, it ain't. It ain't smoke from the lie. It ain't, it ain't no sin from the lie, from the steal. That's not sin. That's the attributes of sin. Uh, he does that because he's a sinner. If he wasn't a sinner, he wouldn't do that. But because he's a sinner, he does that. Now you say, well, glory to God, I don't smoke, I don't drink. That don't make you a sinner. That's just the attributes of a Christian. <laughs> you don't do it because you're a Christian. That's the way it is. And if you do to the other, you're not a Christian. If you do believe, you're not a Christian. You are a Christian. So that's the difference. It's God's provided way. Jesus said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him and send me has everlasting life, and I'll raise him up to the last day. But by their fruits you shall know them. What they are. What kind of life they live. If they say they believe and don't live the life, then there's no light in them. They're simply telling something that isn't true. They're a misled. But if, if I go out here and say, Here's a great wheat field, preacher, look at it. I'll go out there and see a whole field full of cockle birds. I say, I don't believe you. <laughs> That's right. If it's a wheat, oh, a wheat will produce wheat. A Christian church will produce the Bible. Evidence. Amen. These signs shall follow them, at least, said the master root, the root and offspring of David. Is that right? These signs shall follow them and believe. In my name they shall cast out devils and speak with new tongues, take up serpents and drink deadly things, lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. This will be practiced to the end of the world when I come. And he never said, will I find pious people? He never asked that. Will I find good religious people? He never asked that. He said, will I find faith when I return? That's it. Faith is the thing. Can't find it. People profess to have it, but their lives prove they haven't got it. You know them by their fruit. Now, now Elijah, I can imagine coming off the hill there. I know another fellow one day that come down, he had some leprosy. His name was Naaman. He got down there and he got, oh my. He heard faith cometh by hearing, isn't it? Hearing by the word of God. And he tried all the doctors he was over in Syria and there wasn't none of them could cure him with leprosy. So he heard that there was a little girl got captured. She probably had a good Christian experience, a good 
they just experienced the salvation. She said, you know, there's a fellow over in our land practices divine healing for the name of Elijah. As far as I know, he had not nobody healed with leprosy yet, but I believe you go over there and they pray for you, you get healed. Oh, my. We used to more of them little girls. That's right. All right. I said, well, I believe you saddle up and watch the man. He gets so many changes of clothes, so many pounds of silver, so many pounds of gold, takes down there. Now, he wanted divine healing the way he had made up in his mind. This is the way I'm going to get it. So he goes up there and drives up before the Elijah down there. And Elijah sitting back here, I can imagine, in a little old chair, sitting back in his little mud hut down there, or reading some of the scriptures. Here comes the Hayes in. He said, oh, master, what do you want? Well, there's the great name and the captain of the host of Syria out there. He's got leprosy. Tell him to go dip the Jordan seven times. Well, aren't you going up to see him? No, I ain't got time. I'm talking to the Lord now. So he says, well, he's reading the scripture. He's in prayer. He won't come out. He said, go dip the Jordan seven times. And oh, did he blow up. Oh, my. Just about like people do now. Well, I'll never go back to that old place again. I'll never have nothing to do with that bunch of holy rollers. Swell up like a frog eating shot. Go around like that. Oh, I'll never have nothing to do with that no more. I just can't believe in that. No, 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 no. That's the reason you're in the condition you are right now. Right. The Word of God is laid out the way. Me dipping them old muddy waters? No, sir. Well, the waters up in Syria is better than they are. I heard a person say the other day, he said, Oh, it's been some time ago. Said, Do you mean to tell me I'm going to have to come down there to that altar and stop, excuse me? And go on down there and cry and carry on like the rest of them people down there and boo hoo and cry. I said, You're going to get saved in here. Well, I said, I'll just never do that. I said, Go ahead, wait, you are, then. I was preaching to this woman. She was crying, crying. She raised up her hand and started shouting. A little old boy, Baptist teacher, come up to me and he said, Billy, when are you going to get away from them holy rollers? I said, Away from them what? He said, Them holy rollers. I said, I was enjoying your message the other night. So that woman raised up and started crying with her hands up in the air, crying. I said, I said, didn't that interrupt you? I said, no, she didn't do it, would. I said, it, that didn't interrupt me. He said, you know what? He said, that just made chills go up my back like a window shade. I said, boy, if you'd ever get to heaven, you'd freeze to death. I said, there's your shot in heaven. Right. For they're crying before the altar of God. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Day and night. Amen. Yes, sir. God's provided way. You say, Brother Bram, you're teaching that new kind of religion. Uh uh-uh. uh. I just got a brand new case of the old time kind. Old time religion out there screaming and crying and going on. Yep, that's right. God told Job, said, Where was you and I laid the foundation of the world when the old time religion was first put in existence? <laughs> so, why, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> God's provided way, that's all. Just uh, doing what God said to. All right. The first thing you know, Naaman, I can see him, he goes away, puffed up. I'll never go back there again. One man had enough salvation by him saying, Now look, Father, if um, if the prophet would have bid you some hard thing to do, give you all this money and, and pay for your healing, well, you'd accepted it. But just because he told you to go get in the Jordan, why, well, you don't want to do it. I can see, well, maybe I'll try. And here he goes down, you know, and he goes down and he looks at that buddy in Jordan, you know. Mm, that bunch of it's like you know what I mean. You don't have to go down over to that place. Well, I see your leprosy then. So then he goes on down you know, and I can see him get off his high horse like a lot of people do, you know. If I have to degrade myself to get out of that bunch of people like that. <laughs> so I can see him get out there in the water, mm, you know, hold his nose like this. Valerie goes to somebody say, Oh, I told you there wasn't nothing to it. <laughs> I still got my leprosy. Yeah, the prophet said seven times. Just keep on dipping until the seven times is over. But, Brother Branham, how long do I have to dip? Until. <laughs> until what? Until you get it. That's what Jesus said. Wait in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power. Two days? Until. How long? Until. Until you're endued. That's right. Just stay there until. That's the word of the Lord. All right. One time there's a fellow by the name of Jehoshaphat, a bunch of them went out into the wilderness, and as they went out, they forgot to take his compass with them. And another thing, they went out without consulting the Lord, and they got in trouble. You just start without consulting the Lord about something, you get in trouble too. So they got in trouble, and they found out they was out there seven days, they didn't have anything to eat, water's all dried up, sure, there's nothing from the eat or drink. So one of them said, what are we going to do? We're out here to perish. Is one of them had to think, well, God's got a provided way for this. 
So he said, isn't there a prophet somewhere that we can consult the Lord? They said, yes, there's Elisha down there. He poured hands on, poured water on Elijah's hand. Oh, he had anything to do with Elijah either. Elijah was a real prophet. So we'll go down and see him. So here they come up to the prophet. He seen this idolater's son coming up. So he kind of got blown up. He told him, so why don't you go to your mother's God? Why don't you go back to your own church? Why are you coming down to me for? Oh, he got really raw about it. You know, kind of tore up. Said, why don't you go back to your mother's God? Why don't you go back to your mother's church? That's where you started from. Why are you coming to me? He said, nay, nay. Just like that, he said, if I didn't respect the presence of Jehoshaphat, they wouldn't even look at you. Now he got all stood up. They played with the music. <laughs> so they got to playing the music, the tambourine. Now listen, if you can't be the prophet, you can be one of the instruments. You'll play the music to bring the spirit down on the prophet. <laughs> you know what I mean. So they begin to play the tambourine and so forth and beat the drums and play the instruments and all and begin to beat and play and had a great big old song maybe playing and going to be a meeting in the air and a sweet, sweet by and by. God's own son will be the leading one at the meeting in the air. The prophet begin to get into the spirit. And the first thing you know, when he got in the spirit, things begin to happen. That's what's the matter. We can't get anywhere here. We don't get the spirit of it. That's it. Right. What about that, Brother Bosworth? Right. We got to get the spirit of it. So he begins to get there clapping their hands and maybe they're having a good time. The spirit of God began to fall on the prophet. The spirit got on the prophet. Then he began to see things. You go to seeing things when you get the spirit. So he began to get the spirit. He said, now I'm getting God's provided way to see what's going to happen. He said, go out yonder and start digging some ditches. Because there's going to be some water come. I can see him get the shovels and start digging. One guy said, oh my. I hit something here. What is it? Days of miracles is past. Well, if you're only that deep, that's all the water you're going to get. Just pitch the thing out and keep on digging. That's all. What I'm saying, well, uh, Miss Jones laughed at me and said, there was no such a thing as divine healing. Keep the old tin can out and keep on digging. The digger, bigger the ditch you dig, the more water you'll get. Yeah. Well, I don't see any clouds. I don't see any sign of healing. I don't see this. You ain't dug your ditch yet. <laughs> that's what's the matter. That's what's the matter tonight. You haven't got your ditches dug. Brother, let's get the shovels and dig a ditch. Well, he said, you ain't going to see any sign. There ain't going to be any rain. There ain't going to be any this, that, other. But you're going to find water. Hallelujah. Amen. What I think tonight that West Palm Beach is a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival to sweep from one side of the city to the other. And a bunch of these preachers around the other pass back, in their hearts, get out the altar and get right with God. And you'll have an old-fashioned revival. Amen. Amen. That's free. That's right. Brother, that's what this nation needs today. That's what this country needs today. It's for jealousy and petty larceny to get out of people's hearts. Amen. Right. Come back to God. Brother, I know that's bad. Hard to take. And I know that's going deep home. When I was a little boy, we lived so poor. We'd mama would have to uh, borrow meat skins in a pan to get the grease to make our corn, corn pone. We just had to live off of cornbread molasses and, and, and so forth. And you didn't have the lard, so she had to get old meat skins. And every Saturday night, I know we, she had a big old tea kettle, a big old cedar tub. And it turned poor, that tea kettle full of hot water in there. We all had to take a bath. Every Saturday night, it was a bath. Then take a big dose of cast off. I, I never will forget that. I had to eat such foods as that. And I used to take it when Mom would come. I'd, I'd hold it over. I'd say, Mama, Mama, please don't. Oh, I said, I, if the thing makes me so sick, she said, if it don't make you sick, it don't do you any good. So I mean that tonight. If it don't make you like good and sick, preacher, it don't do you any good. Maybe it'll stir you up a little bit. Get your digestive orders working so you can take the full gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir, God's provided way. That's right. It'll fix you up. Make you feel better tomorrow. Just swallow right on down and say, yeah, I guess that's right. I'm going to shake hands this man make up with you, man. After I'm going to cooperate the meeting, I'm just going to do everything I can to see the glory of God move on. You're going to get somewhere then. Brother, is that something? All right, but it's God's provided way. <laughs> That's right. All right, I can see then. They got their water and they got their ditches filled up. And the first thing you know, they never only drank all the water wanted. They went over and took a rock and stopped up all the old coal farm of wells they had over there. And if you just dig real deep tonight, so this building filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, 
and the people are healed and filled with the Spirit and out on the streets and screaming and cra- praising God and walking down to these bar rooms tomorrow and giving testimonies and everything for the glory of God, we'll stop up all these old coal farmer wells around here with some of these stones that's right of testimonies. Amen! That's right. I believe it with all my heart. God has a provided way. One time there was a woman, she had a blood issue in the Bible. Oh my, it was very bad. The doctors couldn't do nothing. So she'd heard about a man was healing the sick. So the first thing you know, one night, he know that. He pulled all night across the sea in a big storm. The next morning, that little boat pushed into the willows down there. She was sitting up on the hill. She looked at it, and something told her in her heart, God has a provided way for me. If I can only touch that man's clothes, I'm going to get well. Here she goes down. And when you try to follow God's provided way like it has been in all ages, you'll find conflict everywhere. I can see her come up against the pastor and say, Now where do you think you're going? I want to touch his garment. Nonsense! She pressed right on by. Next thing she come up there, she come with Brigham Young and all of his bunch of wives. <laughs> she comes to the next fellow. What a day is the miracle to say. She just moved right down, moved between her legs and went right on. She didn't pay us another. She had one alternative. That was to do what God told her to do in his heart. Amen. That's what we need tonight. Father, God provided way. She moved right through and touched his garments. A lot of people hugged him and everything. Said, oh, master. He said, who touched me? Who touched me? He looked around to see where the vision was. It's the same as he does now. So thy faith is saved. He's going to Jesus. Amen. What was it? A lot of them were saying this, that, and the other. Peter said when he said, who touched me? He said, well, master, the whole throng that touched me. He said, yeah, but I know when somebody touched me. <laughs> That's the kind of a touch we want to have tonight. That's God's provided way for every one of you tonight. God's touch. It's just provided way. Look and live. He's got a provided way. Say, Lord, I believe it. Like a lady going out there now with that baby. She believes with that baby. Going walking out. Lady, you with the baby. Turn around this way. You believe with all your heart for that baby? You believe that condition is going to leave it? You believe that diabetes is done gone from it? It has, so go on out of the building. That's what you do. It touch the provided way. Amen. Hallelujah. God provided way. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. If God provided way for every sinner, every man that believes, can have it right now. Do you believe it? God provided way. There's a woman who, uh, a, a man one day who had lost his little daughter. Jesus the provided way. Come lay his hands on the girl. She got well. There was an old blind man one day by the name of Bartimus. Touched the hem of his garment as it was and took call for him. And he accepted God's provided way and was made well. You believe that? Look! Hallelujah! Brother, I feel good. Now you're getting into the atmosphere. Now you're getting things right. If you can only sell your mind, sell your heart, say, God, I accept it. I believe it with all my heart. God's right here now to make every person well. You believe that? It's God's provided way. That woman, that little baby, just as she started out wondering in her mind, she's going to have to take it home. What was the matter? God had a provided way. Right. Let me tell you something, brother. The church got all formally and different one time. The church got just about like it is now. Everyone having a creed. Everyone having a denomination. Everyone having this. One had this and one had that. But there come a time then when Jesus came along. He was God's provided way. Is that right? A woman touched the hem of his garment. There was a time when Jesus had gone up to heaven. And God had a provided way. Peter the apostle. They laid in his shadow and was made well. Is that right? God provided way. They had another man named Paul. Is that right? And they couldn't, he couldn't even pray for them all. So God had a provided way. It took anxious off of Paul's body. The unclean spirits went out. Is that right? The church got to a place where they was kind of cowardly. They climbed up in the upper room and stayed up there until ten days and nights. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. Not a preacher walking up the road saying, Now we'll go take you in by membership. Not a Catholic priest to say, We'll give you the Holy Eucharist. But there came God's provided way. The Holy Ghost come down from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. They didn't walk up and say, I want to put my name on the church books. They did it God's provided way. They began to run screaming, speaking in tongues, jumping around, 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 shouting and praising God. From there come a church. God's provided way. It's still God's provided way. God hasn't changed a bit. 
for this gospel must be preached to every kindred tongue and nation for a witness unto me. Then he will come again. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. God's provided way. Pray for the sick. God's provided way. These things that I do, I see vision. Know what's in your heart. Do these things. These things that I do shall you also. God's provided way. This will be a witness to me of my resurrection. I'll be slaughtered all over the world. God's provided way. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how he's provided way, sir. He's provided way for every sinner. He's provided way for every seeker of the Holy Ghost. He's provided way for all things. Whatever. Lady, you sitting there with that check address on, you don't have no prayer card, do you? Sitting right there. Elderly, lady, you don't have no prayer card. You were praying. That's right. But you have something wrong with your side, don't you? You want to get healed of it. You believe God will make you well? You believe God will heal you? It's in your left side, isn't it? See, when you're trying to get out of bed, holding your left side, isn't that right? All right, it's gone from you now. You've accepted God's provided way. He's here to make you heal. God bless you. May you go in God's eternal peace and grace rest upon you. Amen. You believe Him with all your heart? Look this way and live, please. What do you think, lady, sitting there? You believe with all your heart? You say you have a hernia. You believe God will make you well with that hernia? If you believe, you believe it? You believe you have done it? Will you accept God's provided way? God's provided way is that power that you feel coming on you right now. If you open up your heart, that angel of God standing right above you there will make you well. You believe it? If you can, you can be healed. God bless you. What do you think about sitting there with high blood pressure, lady? You believe or the heart trouble sitting right there it is. Isn't that right? You believe that power of God's moving on you now is making you whole? Stand up. The heart trouble is left you. God's provided way. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Amen. Get to believing. I see a lady coming from Miami. She's moving up here. The woman has, she has low blood pressure. And she's anemia. She's sitting right there. All right? God bless you, sister. Go back home. Be well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lady sitting right next to you had high blood pressure, too. God bless you. You can go home and get well, too. Thanks to good Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The angel of God's here. My whole body just so numb. I can hardly feel my hands. Imagine them. Got something wrong with your lungs sitting back there, have you, sir? All right, stand up. Jesus Christ healed you. God bless you. Go home now and get well. Amen. I challenge you to believe God Almighty. I see a man sitting there, just out or somewhere in there, just a minute. The man's got arthritis. He's got the, he's got hemorrhoids too. That's it. That's your wife sitting next to you, isn't it? Is that right? Stand up, lady. I've seen that same lady standing in vision just a moment. Reverend, I believe, yes, sir, you have a gallbladder trouble. And you've got something like in your nose, something caused your nose to run. It's, it's hay fever. Is that right? Say, don't, isn't your name Joe? Or don't they call you Joe or something like that? Or is that Joe Stone or something on that order? Is that right? I thought I heard that when I heard that doctor that's examining you. Go home, sir. You're from Miami, too, aren't you? Never seen you in my life. But isn't that the truth? Is that right? Put your hand over on your wife. Why put your hand on your husband? And you always accept your healing because you go home well. Hallelujah. You guys think I'm crazy, man. I know what I'm speaking of. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is here for every man. Healing is here for every person. Amen. You think I'm beside myself. I'm not. I know what I feel. You're in the right atmosphere right now. Every one of you to be healed. Will you believe it? God, who is my judge, knows it all around on this building right now. Seems like one big yellow bank with streets hanging down everywhere. It's you believing, friend. Oh, take God's provided way by taking His word and saying, Mark, it's the truth and accept it. Will you do it? Oh, my. Uh, every spirit in here is under my 
control now through Jesus Christ. That's right. That's true. If you'll believe me to be God's prophet at this time, there will not be a feeble one among you. That's right. If you'll believe it, I can only say it. And God's here to confirm it and back it up and say it's the truth. Bow your heads, let's pray. Lord, I don't know what else to do. I see it moving over the whole entire audience now. Oh, Father, please, God, while you're here in this great power move, may you heal every person here. May the Holy Ghost now, while this great power is moving over this audience, may the Holy Ghost move right down. This is your provided way. That everyone was healed that laid in the shadow of Peter. While Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on him. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ that the Holy Ghost will drive back every gloomy spirit, every doubting spirit, and may the witness of Jesus Christ, which is now present, to prove that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, break down the walls of this devil's doubting, ungodly spirit that would move around over here, and may every person be healed. Oh, thou devil, I charge thee by the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you turn these people loose. Come out of them. Every person may be free. Them sitting there with arthritis. The woman sitting there bound with the power of the devil. That woman sitting there losing her mind by menopause. Every one of you are absolutely healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you'll accept it and rise to your feet, claim your God-given victory. This is the time to shout and the walls of Jericho as it was. The enemy that's keeping you out will fall to the ground and every power of the devil will be broken in Jesus' name.